Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. So we cut up some 1x4s for some crates a long time ago. And we had them sitting around the shop and we got nothing really too much to do in the shop. So we thought we'd get our 1x4 straps, cut them down, plain them down and make a couple bowls. So stay tuned guys and uh, we'll show you what we're going to do as we plain them and as we glue them together. So we just finished off planing all of these in our thickness planer down to uh, all each a nominal. So if you want to come take a look at this, they are all approximately 13 16 of an inch wide. So if you can see here on the ends, we don't have each of these ends are flat. So we're going to take and flip these over very quickly because we got to see the end grains and I'll show you why. So there, now that we've flattened them all out, take a look at these end grains. See how one grain goes one way? These are called happy faces and frowny faces. This grain goes that way, that grain goes that way, this way, that way, that way, that way. This is more like that. Okay, so what you want to do here, you guys, is you want to put happy face to frowny face, happy face to frowny face. Because these grains will all fight each other. And that's what you want to do. You want them fighting each other because if you had them all the same way, what's going to happen is your bowl will crack. Because all the grains are going to be going one way and it's going to force the grain to cut itself. So, see, look at this. Frowny face, happy face, frowny face, happy face, frowny face, happy face, and so on. That's what we want to do. So, we'll get this all set up. We'll measure it out. We're going to glue it up, clamp it up, and leave it sit for a couple days. And we'll get back to you then. So, now you can stop it. Because then. Hey guys, so we're back. If you want to come take a look at this, we're all ready and prepped for glue. So we got our happy face and frowny faces all opposite. So our boards actually fight with one another and not break. So what we're going to do now is we're going to glue it all up. The reason I'm doing this is because I had a customer who sent me a 
a picture of a bowl and she wanted to see what we can do out of a bowl. Uh, I'm just going to show her what we can actually produce out of scrap garbage wood. So that's why we're doing this. It's going to turn out really beautiful. The plate size itself or the bowl size itself is going to be about 10 to 12 inches. So it's going to be a big beautiful bowl. And all of these pieces, like I said from before, it was just from an old pallet. Uh, maybe 20 cents a board. So times that by 10, we got two bucks worth of stuff here. And our glue is another $3. So it's going to be a $5 bowl with material, not counting the leg. All right, guys, so let's see how we're going to glue this up. When we're gluing it up, you want to be very generous with your glue. Very generous with your glue. And you only want to do a couple, like one board at a time. Make sure your glue is spread. It's all good if you get glue out the sides, because right now, you just want to make sure you got plenty of glue to put it together. So we're just going to slap this onto our one and then keep gluing and keep gluing and keep gluing. Cool? We'll catch you in a bit. Hey, welcome back. So we got all of these are already glued. As you can see, we're just flattening them down like this, gluing the face, spreading out the glue and slapping them together. So you'll see. You know, when we're doing this, we're just being very, very generous with our glue. We want glue to be everywhere because at the end of the day, the glue is stronger than the wood. It's amazing how they make this glue, but it's good stuff. Just spread it around, nice and even. Slap your pieces together, and then we're going to sit here and clamp them. There. Now, kids, remember, this isn't mayonnaise. And for our friends in the U.S., it's not Miracle Whip. Or Hellman's. <laughs> there we go. All right, so watch this. Now we're going to have about a 10-inch, a 10 to 11-inch bowl. Doesn't matter about the glue right now. So we're just going to clamp them all together. And we're going to get crazy with our clamps here as well. Ever wonder how he got so big? This is what he does. Clamping things. <laughs> That's how I roll. <laughs> so you want to temporary clamp one side, temporary clamp the other side, then we're going to flip it over and clamp it again. Don't be scared to over tighten your clamps on this one because you want to see the glue all coming out. They're all slipping because we don't have the clamps on the other side yet. So that's what we're going to do right now. How was that for a sandwich? Who needs a triple decker when you got this? <laughs> It's not a diet, it's a diet. So, there, we're just gonna straighten this out a little bit. Straighten this one out a little bit, and we'll flip it back over and redo the other side. See how that's still sliding? There. Now it'll slide back into place. We use our hammer, tap it into place a couple more times. And there you have it, fellas. It's a god of thunder. That's how I roll. <laughs> there it is. There. Now we're going to do this on this side again. You can see how it's flattening out now. A lot of glue in there. That's why it keeps sliding. There. So give it a second. Now watch out for your ears because we're going to slam this block. 
just to flatten everything out. He's a Michael Jackson fan. Beat it. All that glue coming out is going to be turned off on the lathe, so it should be fine. Here we go. We're all glued up, somewhat level, so we're going to let this sit for about three days, and then we'll get back with you. Thanks for joining in, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome back to uh, KCD Millwork Channel. So, uh, some time ago, we glued this up, and we showed you how to put the happy faces and the frowny faces on to uh, coincide with each other so it doesn't work. We don't have a 23 inch planer, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just use our belt sander to get all of our glue on and make this one smooth plane. Uh, and then what we have to do is because of our lathe is not a 16 inch lathe, it's only a 12 inch throat lathe, we're going to uh, put it through our table saw and, or our, even a sawzall and make it a, a little circle so it's easy enough to go through our lathe. So let's get to it. Okay, so as you can see, all we were doing there is we were just taking off all of the rough spots. Um, these here were just 1x4s that we had from a pallet. So just cheap old 1x4s, and what we're doing is we're just going to see if we can make some kind of a salad bowl. Uh, so we just glued them all together, 12 inches long, just so we can get them through our lathe. But if you take a look at this side, see how it was all glued up from our happy faces and our frowny faces, if you can see those? So from all that glue, since we don't have a jointer wide enough that would do this, we just sanded it all off flush. So now we're going to check and see if our board is 13 inches or even 12 and a half inches. And now what we're going to do is we're going to send it through our planer to take all of this glue off and even off this side just a little bit more. But this is going to get us our building block to send it through our planer. 
All right, so we're just gonna pause the video and we're gonna do that and we'll show you after we do that. Cool, so we got our uh, tabletop uh, thickness planer set up here and we set it all, already preset it up for uh, the thickness of our one by four bowl here. Make sure you're using all precautionary measures for safety and such. Uh, get your vacuum hooked up, get your goggles, uh, ear safety, anything that you need to, to stay safe. Uh, we're just going to keep going. We're going to plane this down until we're even on both sides. So as you can see, it didn't really take us very long. Two or three passes on both sides and we're smooth on both planes. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna mark our center and we're going to cut close to a circle so it can fit onto our lathe and then we're gonna put an auxiliary block on for our center point. So we're gonna pause the video and we'll get back at you once we start getting ready to cut for the sides. Hey guys. Okay, so all we're gonna do here is we're going to just mark our center the 12 and 3 quarters, so that's 6 and 3 eighths to the center. And from that center, we want to mark this. It's 14 and 3 eighths. Now let's go 14. So we want 7 inches to center. So we want to measure our throat on our lathe. From bottom of bench up to center of our punch or center of our drive, we have 6 and a quarter. So 12 inches, 12 and a half, 11 and three quarters to keep our bowl safe. So that's what we want to mark here. 11 and three quarters divided in half is five and three quarters, five and seven eighths. So that's what we want to do. We want to mark a circle at five and seven eighths, which will be 11 and three quarters total circle for our bowl on there. I got myself a little straight edge here. I'm going to just drill a pilot hole in the center and five and three, sorry, five and seven eighths over, I'm gonna drill another tiny little hole for my pencil and I'm just gonna draw a circle. I'm gonna pause the video while I'm getting that set up. Okay, so I got all my tools set up for that now. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna drill a tiny hole in the one end of this little straight edge we got. Okay, so from that center point over, we want five and seven eighths because our total is 11 and three quarters. So I always put it on the one inch mark, that way you never screw up on your tape measure. And then I'll go over to the six and seven eighths mark, adding your one inch, of course. Drill that tiny hole.
Okay. So, from the center of our bowl is where we want to put the pivot. So your first hole that you drilled is your pivot point. So you put your pivot point in there. Now you don't need to worry about this because we're putting an auxiliary block on. This is close to four inches thick. So by the time you get it on the lathe, the auxiliary block, our bowl is only going to be about two inches. So you got a good inch and a half to play with. And this is only one by four. So if it doesn't work out, guys, just get it. Buy an eight dollar one by four, cut your one foot pieces and glue it all back together and try it again. So, as you can see, now we can turn this. And because we can turn this on our one five and seven eighths mark, <clears throat> That's where we put our pencil in here and draw our circle. There. Now we have our circle. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take, we don't have a big enough bandsaw. So we are actually going to take our skill saw or jigsaw or sawzall, uh, being that we don't have the tools that are needed, we're used to working somehow without them. So we're gonna find a way to cut this into a circle and uh, rough cut, and then once we get it to that point, we'll get back to the video. So we're just gonna pause the video for now and we'll catch you in a little bit, guys. Hey guys, so we're fortunate enough to uh, have a four inch jigsaw blade. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just try to with the throat of the jigsaw, it's not going to go all the way through. It's maybe only going to go three quarters of the way through. So what we'll do is we'll just mark this and then uh, we should be able to just about snap it off. But you'll see. Just uh, stay through us through the video here. We're all learning together. Okay, that's not gonna work as well as we thought, so we're gonna get our sawzall blade with a four or a six inch blade, and we're just gonna nip off the corner. So, one sec. So as you can see, even though you don't have the exact tools that everybody has in those, well, I don't want to say professional videos because every video is a professional one, but even though you don't have the tools for the job, you can always find something else that will do as long as you stay safe. Uh, so the jigsaw being that it was only a, a four inch blade, the throat movement because of the fence wasn't moving as much as we needed it to. And it's not going to go all the way through our blade or all the way through our block and that's not going to be safe so i'd rather just take like an eight inch sawzall blade and use our sawzall and just nip off the corners as much as we need being as that's 12 and a half inches for our from our tabletop to the center of our drive and we're making this 11 and three quarters that still gives us room so even if we don't cut exactly close once we have our auxiliary block on which you'll see later Onto that uh, lathe, we'll still have that little bit of plate, little bit of movement. So I'm going to get close, but I'm not going to get right on the line. You'll see as we move along. So here's our circle that we drew. There's our center line, and we just traced our little circle. And as you can see here in the corner, that's where our jigsaw was trying. But, we were a quarter inch short from going all the way through the board. So we would have eventually got chattering. And uh, it just wouldn't have been safe for going through. So this is where we're going to just maybe 
We'll clamp it down here halfway through and we'll take this side first. Always make sure you're staying safe when you're doing this, you guys. Doing any kind of work like this is always, you know, being safe is number one key. When I was in grade 12, I didn't really think about that. And uh, I had a little incident, I don't know if you guys have seen throughout all my videos, but I have a finger missing. And uh, so I always try to instill safety now, no matter what. Yeah, I cut a little bit of corners, but I still always try to stay safe. All right, so let's get this cut. Clamp down your piece first. So as you can see, I don't have a big bandsaw to put this through. Sawzall, or as some people call it on the, in the TV world, is a, a swordfish. I don't know if you guys seen that show a long time ago. On I can't say the name actually, but uh, yeah. So the swordfish will do just fine. You just gotta stay safe, be patient. Uh, it's gonna take about I don't know maybe 12 of these. So if you guys just bear with us, uh, let's just continue on. We'll eventually get close to our circle. up and down what this is doing is if you were to go straight the whole time you'd heat up that blade and all that sawdust gets stuck in this these teeth and you're just gonna sit there and you'll actually start to see smoke and you're not you're actually heating up the blade too much where it's gonna dull the blade faster so you'll see me tilting and when I tilt what that's doing is it's getting the front teeth and it's cleaning out the sawdust then it's getting the back teeth and it's cleaning out the sawdust. So I'm going through twice as fast as what I would normally as a straight on blade cut. Um, didn't know, don't know if you know that, but for me it helps. So, yeah, we don't have a big bandsaw, but you know what? I've, uh, I've been used to doing stuff like this, finding tools to make things happen ever since I was probably 20 years old. I haven't had the money when I was younger, never had the money, never had the know-how, never had the tools, so I've always learned to do things with what you have. Be appreciative of what you have and uh, yeah, 
once you do buy something, you'll appreciate it a little bit more. So let's just continue on here. I told you guys this already in the video maybe earlier on but this one by four was just garbage from uh, pallets we were building earlier uh, all in total I maybe got seven dollars seven dollars in uh, one by fours here from all the garbage scrap so if you're not used to uh, turning on a lathe or if you're just starting out or just practicing doing this it's perfect because you got seven dollars worth of material and maybe well your time is your time no matter what you charge but when you're doing your passion your time is nothing so that's that's why i wanted to do this before i did it with any other uh beautiful oak or redwood or paddock or anything of that sort i want to just do it with a scrap piece of one by four i want to see what it's going to turn out like and if it turns out nice and we're going to do it again but uh someone requested if i could do a bowl kind of this size one of my uh, friends on Facebook so this is the reason why we're doing this just showing that we can you can pretty much make a beautiful piece out of garbage so if you think you have garbage laying around in the shop don't even worry about it take it use it turn it into a beautiful piece of wood that's what woodworking is is uh, it's craftsmanship it's turning something that is garbage into a, a flower or you know how a seed is you think you look at a seed and you don't even realize that that seed turns into a beautiful flower or a tree or anything so keep in mind that little piece of garbage that you're throwing out keep it a couple months from now you could turn that and a couple other pieces of garbage into something beautiful so let's continue You have a feeling that this bowl is going to turn out really nice <laughs> at least i hope so anyway thanks for bearing with me guys 
sure you guys wanted to see uh, from start to finish, but you know what? It's always nice to see how it progresses and how it's done in the process of doing it. If you guys have noticed throughout some of my other videos yet I don't know all the terminology but uh, you know what as long as the job gets done at the end of the day and as long as you have a beautiful piece of art that's all that matters you don't need to be perfect no one needs to be perfect uh, I might know, not know all the tool names I might not know all of my names on my lathe but I know how to use the lathe I know how to use the tool safely and that's the number one thing uh, which is why some of the people were calling that a swordfish. It's not a swordfish, it's a sawzall. Um, yeah, so I mean, you don't need to know the right terminology for everything. Uh, people from the States or from the UK or from wherever you guys are, you guys might have different names for these things, but you never know. So yeah, I guess, I guess what I was just trying to say there is, yeah, I don't know all the terminology, but you know what? I'm just trying to send these videos out there for you guys to see that a beautiful piece of work can be done with as little as very little tools as possible and you don't need to have a thousand dollar tools here a thousand dollar tools there you can grab used tools from the shop anywhere fifty dollars here fifty dollars there whatever you can afford i'm sure you guys can make it work with whatever it needs to so yeah i just have a good i have a good feeling about this bowl I'm gonna once I'm done cutting this and trimming this I'm, I'll bring it over there to the video or to the screen and I'll let you guys see it 
when I glued this up, some of the, some of the cups, the happy faces and the frowns weren't as tight as I would have liked them to be. But I guess once I started uh, clamping them, I had quite a few clamps on this, maybe 10 clamps. But once I started clamping it all together, uh, looking at this, there's hardly any voids whatsoever. Um, and the beautiful grain in this, it's going to be outstanding. I'm going to love it. So yeah, a couple more cuts here, then I'll show you guys in the, I'll bring it up to the screen and show you. One more cut, guys. As you can see, I didn't have a uh, big enough bandsaw, but I was able to get the job done with a sawzall clamping. Took a couple extra more minutes, but you know what? As long as you're doing it safely, you should be able to make it turn out okay. This is good enough for now, is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to my bench top sander over here. I'll turn the camera around and you can kind of see me cleaning up the video a little bit or cleaning up the sides, but here I'll show you. So I showed you, see there's all my happy faces and my frowns, but you see how tight those grains are in there? You can hardly see the joints right now. Yeah, don't, it, that's from the saws all, all that redness. It looks a little bit slanted, but as I take it over to my bench top sander, I'm gonna clean that all up right now a little bit. I could even leave this right now and go onto my lathe, but I'm gonna clean it up a little bit more. So we'll turn the video, we'll return the camera around here. There's my bench top sander, so let's, Sound this up a little bit. Get my earplugs on here. Now again, all you're doing with this one, as you can see our line. See where our line is there? That's our finish. 
So we can come in a little bit from there, but what we're going to do is we're going to try and take our benchtop sander and we're going to try and get as close to that line as we can so that way we're not having a problem on the lathe. So I'm just going to show you guys, uh, we're going to pause the video and we'll show you when it's done. But if you want, just take a look here. So this here is how we started out with the Sawzall. But you see what I mean if you have a little bench top sander and if you have a Sawzall, you can get from this to this. See? All those nice tight grains. You can't even tell I used the Sawzall on it. And this will be good enough for our lathe. So what we're going to do, we'll pause the video, and then we're going to just do it all on our benchtop sander. And then once we're done all of our sanding, we'll get the video back on. Okay, guys? Oh, and <laughs> if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification button, and that way you're going to be notified whenever we put up a new video. Uh, normally, we try to get a video up every couple days to every week. But lately we've been busy with our construction company and trying to get things done with them and building stores for our clients. So uh, just bear with us while we're still trying to get our video, our YouTube uh, channel going here. But uh, let me sound this and I'll get, get back to you guys in a couple minutes here. All right, guys? Hey, guys. Uh, so I just thought I'd show you before I, I did that, the whole side of what it looks like now. Now bear in mind I did a little bit, so this is that's the smooth part I just did now. But see how rough it looks from the sawzall? All the red marks. So all we're doing now is we're going to take it down to that pencil line that you see there. Alright? Hey guys, <clears throat> so if you can remember what it looked like beforehand, it took us about 5-10 minutes, not very long. But if you look at all the edges now, that there is actually the grain of the wood, if you can believe that. It's like a, I don't want to say a rotten grain, it's just a darker sapwood. So you see how smooth that is? Same with there, it's a couple knots, so that might turn out okay. Look at that, beautiful piece right there. So yeah, you can see how that, uh, using the Sawzall on your bench top sander, how everything, look at that, that's gonna be beautiful, that little X there. Let's hope that turns out nice. But yeah, so using a sawzall and a bench top sander, you can get this thing looking like a circle. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put our either our auxiliary block on. Yeah, we're probably going to get our auxiliary block on now and uh, start doing a bowl. So we're going to pause the video again. Uh, I know we keep on pausing the video, but you know what? It's uh, better to pause the video than show you guys a, a two hour video. This way you can't. Uh, you know you don't get bored of the video but uh, we'll be back in a couple minutes hey guys welcome back okay so uh we said we'd uh, come back once our auxiliary block is on here but we thought let's show you how to put an auxiliary block on your block for your lathe so this is your, again i don't know the proper terminology and <laughs> comment below this is your lathe chuck um so what we did here is we just cut a little piece of three quarter inch plywood or five eighths plywood on our saw we marked, gave it an X, we marked the center. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, drill a center point into our center point here, and screw it onto here. Then we'll screw this block on to here with inch and a quarter screws. Now remember, when you're putting this through your lathe, you want to, don't 
whatever screw you're using for your auxiliary block, you want to make sure that you have that mark on here somehow. So you're not going to lathe it off and it's not going to hit it in the, uh, while you're lathing with your tools. So just remember that. So let's, uh, I marked the center of this. This still has a center pivot point. So I'm going to screw this block onto here right now with uh, inch and a half screws. I'm just going to pre put this one in right now. Okay, so let's put this to our center pivot point, what we had when we marked our circle. And it should just find its way if you put the screw through a little bit more. Beautiful. So right there. Okay, now when you're screwing these on, you can put uh, four screws, should be sufficient enough, but I always like to go a little bit more because, yeah, it's an auxiliary block, you're never going to use this again, and you're not going to go past that one point of the bowl anyway. So when you're putting it on, just make sure that you're using enough screws to keep your auxiliary block on and it's not going to fly off. So let's just take a double check here. So inch and a half screws. So you can see I'm going in close to an inch on my material. So I got to make sure that I'm not going to go past that point when I'm laving. So I think what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to take this one out and I'm going to use inch and a quarter screws instead of inch and a half. So here's my inch and a quarters. Because that's one thing I don't want to do is mess up my tools on my lathe. So now that you have your center point, you can screw wherever you want. Because once this is on the lathe, you know, finding your center is what you want to do anyway. For your live center and your chuck. Remember not to put the screws too deep because that's the point of using the inch and a quarters, not inch and a halves, because you don't want to have your screws going too deep. As you can see, I don't want this chuck flying off for the auxiliary block. I'm pretty excited about this. I'll be honest with you, this is the first big bowl I've ever done, so. Uh, if you guys got any advice in the comments below, please let me know. Um, but I'm just doing this to what I've seen through all of my years in doing this. Now I can use the inch and a halves through my auxiliary block from my lathe into my auxiliary block here into this bowl. But yeah, no, anyway, as I was saying, if you guys have any advice, comment below, let me know. Because... I mean, I'm doing what I can. Oh, let me tell you, when you're putting, when you're screwing this on, this chuck, I marked center with my pencil line. So there's four holes on your auxiliary chuck that goes onto your lathe. Use those lines in those holes and that should keep you centered. up and I'll show you in a second here so there we go okay so let me show you I used my 5 8 auxiliary block I screwed it into my block that I'm or my bowl that I want to do here's my auxiliary chuck for my lathe so you can see how I marked my center lines and you see how these four screws are going through those center lines you see that black screw right in the dead center? That means that this should spin very smooth on our lathe. You get a little bit of wobbling, but not much. It's a smaller lathe. So, so let's, uh, I'll pause the video just for a second. I'll put this on the lathe. I'll move the camera around and I'll point you guys down onto the lathe so you can see what's going on. See you in a few. Hey guys, so as you can see, 
um, our, our lathe, or sorry, our bowl that we want to turn is just a little bit too big. We can't get our tool rest in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim this off just enough where we can slide our tool rest in and through because in order to get the outside of this bowl properly, this tool rest needs to technically be out here so you're not shattering anything. So as a, we got it on here, it's turning. See how we have a tiny bit of wobble, but not much. So what we're going to do here, we got it going on the lowest speed right now. We want to take our time because when it's going a bowl such this big, we're going to put our center point on here though as well. Uh, a bowl this big, you want to take it nice and slow because that's the last thing you need. Oh, we can't even do that right now. Look at that. All right. So the last thing you need is for this thing to be flying off on you. So we're going to just take our time, trim about an inch and a half off here just so we can get this tool rest underneath properly. So let's do that.
So I'm sure you guys can see it chattering a little bit, but if you can see underneath here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get it so my tool rest can actually slide underneath there. So this rest here can actually slide over so I can get the outside of the bowl. So I'm just trimming it off. So now I know for next time, whatever dimension I have from here to here is gonna be all I can do because of the throat of having my tool rest underneath. So I know that for next time. So it's just a lot of sawdust, look at that. Wait till you see my beard at the end. <clears throat> so yeah, now I know that for next time. Uh, not a big deal. It's just gonna take me a couple extra minutes. I don't mind. I love doing the lathe, so it's all a learning experience. So let's just keep going.
So we're just about there. <laughs> it's pretty close, so it's got a little bit more to go. See how it can fit under there now? That being said, that's how I can get this on there now. It's a little bit better, so we're gonna slide this in underneath. Hopefully we can get that a little bit more. There. Hopefully we can get the rest of this off. out there sorry about this next time uh, I make a bowl you'll be able to see this dimension I'll use that for next time live and learn
Okay, so as you can see, <clears throat> now our tool rest actually slides all the way underneath. Which is what we want. So, now I know for next time that we can't have a bowl any bigger than 9 inches. So, we chiseled off a good inch and three quarters, I guess you could say. So now we can put our center live edge on and then uh, start smoothing this out, making this equal first. And then what we'll do is we'll, uh, once we get our center live edge in, we'll push it in, we'll smooth this out, we'll move our center live edge and we'll start digging out the center. Cool. Took a little longer than expected, but hey, whatever, right? Like I said, everything's always a learning experience. So we'll turn this on low. Push our center live edge in. Now what we want to do is we want to take and we want to smooth this out, even this out, nice as if it was close to finish. Close to, but not really to finish. listen for that sound, that chattering sound, once we get close to this end you'll hear it smooth and out and that's what we want across the whole edge. See how smooth it is there? Right there. That's what we want across the whole edge.
Cool. It's getting there.
All right, so it's coming along. We're getting in there pretty deep. <clears throat> I think we're getting to the point where we can't really go much deeper, so we're going to start shaving the outside and then sanding the inside a little bit. I just don't want to go too deep where I'm catching those screws behind there. Here is we're just going to take a caliper and measure from the inside of this out and then we're going to measure from here over just so we know where the bottom of our bowl is. So we're just going to take a straight edge and go across. That way we can actually know where the outside is. And you don't really need calipers. You can use a pencil or another block of wood. But, so, we have very close to 56 millimeters. You can see that number there. So we're going to take that, oh yeah, see that's right there, that's our depth to where our bottom of our bowl is. I'm just going to mark that with a pencil. That way, when we're, when we're turning it, we're going to see it on the outside and we're going to shave it to that point and go a little bit, just like a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch past and that's where we should be fine. So there's the bottom of our bowl. I'll turn this a little bit. Hopefully you can see that pencil line. So we're just going to keep rocking and rolling. You'll see us sand. You'll see us take the inside out a little bit more, the outside out a little bit more. My arm might be in the way, but I think from here on in we're just going to give her. Let's do this.
Sorry about that, guys. I don't know how that happened. I apologize. That shouldn't have happened. There you go. I just want to make sure the inside of my bowl is going to be nice and smooth before I finish the outside. Because we won't be able to get back to that inside once we're done. The outside. So, my arm might be in the way here, but I'm just going to do a little bit of fine tweaking. Again, I just want to make it nice and smooth in there.
So I have the profile cut out in there. Now I'm going to sand that so it's nice in there. Got a little bit of a divot in there, so let's take that out. Let's just mark that so I know where the divot is. So as that turns, you're going to see the pencil lines slightly. So there's where our divot is. So I want to take that out. Should have taken the divot out. Let's take a look. Oh, just a little bit more, not much. So let's mark that again. Just about gone. A little bit more and we got it gone. Should have did it. Let's take a look and then we can sand it. Perfect. No more divot. So let's give it a sand. We've got to go through all of our grits so it could take a couple minutes. It's always good to go through all your grits, that way you get a nice smooth finish.
Oh, we've got to trim that just a little bit more in there. I see some chattering. So you want the chattering mostly all gone before you can start sanding. I didn't realize it was still there. So let's take that out just a hair more. So we got some chattering here. Yeah. Okay. Let's get that chattering out of there. Should have taken most of it out. If it did, we can sand it. Oh, not bad. Go well, back to our sandpaper. Not bad so far. You just got to go up and grit on the inside. Probably go up to at least uh, 300, 400. Right now this is a 150.
So we'll bump it up to a 220. And we'll go up to a Goodness. Okay, so uh, yeah, we had a little bit of a scare. We had some uh, sandpaper fall off the top shelf, but that's okay. Sorry about that. So now, what we're going to do is we just blew out the um, center of the bowl. So now we're going to put some bowl finish on it, on the inside, some wax. So we sanded it up to about a 320. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to put some of this uh, bowl, solid bowl wax on the inside, beeswax. Let that soak in. Oh yeah, that sucked it up real fast. Put a couple coats on I believe. That soaked it in real fast. We're just using the Clappen's beeswax solid, solid bowl finish. It smells good. I love the smell of that stuff. So we'll let that sit in there. Probably have to put a couple coats in that. See that black rot? I don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty nice. That is soaking it up fast. This is very porous lumber. Actually, you know, should have known that because it's one by four, but we'll take a couple coats. So get those coats in there, let that dry up, and then we can do the outside of the bowl here. A little bit more. What I normally do is I normally turn on the lathe and I run my rag in. That way it uh, gets it a nice smooth polish finish. Keep it nice and low. This way it burnishes it in as well. That's what I do anyway. Everybody else can do something different, and they probably do, but... So I'll take a little bit more as it's turning. And I'll just run it in here like this.
probably about all it's going to take. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let that sit, we'll probably come back to it in a bit, but I'm going to turn the outside of the bowl now. That looks very nice. All right, let's put our tool rest out here and we'll start turning the outside of the bowl. Now remember, we drew that line, so let's take a skew and go a quarter inch past that line because that's the inside of our bowl. doing here is I was just skewing the inside where the bottom of my bowl is going to go that way I can finish it and then eventually cut it off I just got to keep in mind about my screws I used inch and a quarter so I got to make sure that I don't go past that mark which I'm not I'm pretty lucky here so we started out with three and a half inches and we're ending up with a little piece here you know at the end of the day it's going to be a nice bowl I'll show you uh, well you'll see as it progresses
So as you can see, I turned this around a little bit. I took my bowl gouge and I went down the side. So now what I'm going to do is because it's got a little bit of voids, this is spruce. I want to just take and I want to fine tune that a little bit just to get some of that awfulness out of there. And uh, by the time we take some of that out, we should be smooth. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sand it and cut it off. And we should be perfect.
Okay, so we just got to go through all of all our, all of our sandpapers again, 100 all the way up to 300, <clears throat> just so we can get a nice smooth finish. That's all I'm doing here. And then what we'll do is we'll put these wax on the outside, and then we'll cut the finish off. So we went through all of our sandpaper. Now what we're going to do is we're going to blow it off. That way we get most of the dust off. And then we can put our uh, bowl wax on. It's always a good idea to get all the dust out of there as much as you can. That way when you put your bowl finish on, it'll actually look really nice. I'm going to turn this off for now. I'm going to spread it on by hand first. Because it'll soak it in a lot. So it soaked it in quite a bit. Have to put quite a few coats on. There we go. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to let that dry up and we're going to put another three coats on and we'll get back to you and uh, turn back on the video when we're going to cut it off. Hey guys, so I put on the wax and I put on the, the polish. So we're about ready to cut the bowl off of the auxiliary board and then you can see what she's going to turn out like. So let's get this prepped up. So we got to trim in here a little bit more and then what we're going to do is we're going to get a saw and we're just going to set it in there and let it cut itself off. That way I'm not, if I do hit a screw, I'm wrecking a, a $5 saw instead of a $50 uh, tool. So let's see what we can happen. We'll see what we can do to make this happen. So we're just going to run this skew in here. to happen but it'll be fine we can sand that off later so let's take this skew and see if we can't cut that right off we should be still clear of our screws and you'll see it used our skew and we've gone in there a little bit what we're gonna do is we're gonna probably take our saw move our tool rest and let the saw do the rest of the work so give me two seconds here So let's move our tool rest. So we're going to turn this on low. Now when you're doing this, you want to have your hand on the opposite side. And you want to be very careful. So let's turn this down. I'm just going to let this run in here for a couple minutes, not even a couple minutes, just a little bit to get it started for a groove. Take it out. And, well, we got a little bit on the side there, so let's take and smooth that back out a little bit. We 
the side, unfortunately, with our saw. So we're just going to smooth that back out a little. Take the sandpaper and make sure it's nice and clean again. Like I said guys, this is the first big bowl I'm doing, so if any of you have some advice or some suggestions, put it in the comment below or comment section below. Be more than willing to uh, take some advice. And every woodworker is here to uh, make some good stuff, right? So what we're going to do here is we're just going to sand it up to our finish and we'll quickly put that wax seal on or coat again and then uh, we'll stop the lathe and cut it by hand. We don't want that happening again. Live and learn. Live and learn, guys. Live and learn. Hope you guys are liking the video so far. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, go for it. Hit the notification button. And you'll be notified when we're uh, putting on some new videos. go we're just sealing it back up with our salad bowl finish and then we're going to turn it off and uh, cut it by hand instead of uh, turning it we don't want any accidents all right let's see what we got oh yeah for a one by four bowl that's not bad all right, so we're just gonna do this by hand now. school guys that's all I was raised not the conventional way of doing it but oh, I want to try something else here let's try this so that's not a good idea let's try a different way Let's just keep doing this, how about? That could have been a catastrophe, eh? <laughs> Good thing it wasn't. 
There we go. Now she's moving. Like I said, it wasn't the conventional way, but we did her. So we're just going to take that over to the sander, tabletop sander, and sand it up a little bit. You can see how it turns out. So we're going to move the camera here for you guys. Like I said, it wasn't the conventional way of doing it with the saw, but we'll take that off with the sander and see how it goes. Done. Cleaned up nice. See that? There you go, guys. There it is. So we made a mess. We, uh, here, let me turn this camera up a little bit. There we go. So we made a mess. We made some uh, learning curves. We learned some stuff on the, the lathe. And we, uh, we turned a little salad bowl out of some 1x4s. So I don't think that was too bad. Um, so now I know not to put a 11 and 3 quarter inch square stock on my lathe. I can only fit 9 inch. Um, but I think all in all, From our 1x4 block, 
13 by 13, I believe that turned out fairly nice. Nice little salad bowl, nice little end grains. It's not bad for first time making a bowl. Yes, it's not perfect. But hey, for seven dollars worth of material, a little bit of time on my lathe, I don't think it was too bad. All right, guys. So uh, thanks for joining in to the KCD Millwork channel. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification button. Uh, so you'll be notified whenever there's a new video he heading online. And as always, comment below. Let me know what you think about the videos. Let me know what you think about what I could have done better. Uh, advice is always a good thing. My beard's looking a little bit dirty. Ah, looks good though. Uh, okay, so yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for joining in and tune in for next time. Catch you later. And as always, stay safe.